Hi, welcome. Come on in. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you today? Good. I'm glad. Did you have an appointment? Okay, yeah, I remember talking to you on the phone. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that you could uh, make it. Um, so you were saying you had a number of small boxes you need wrapped? Okay. Okay. Did you need um, any filling items like tissue paper or um, confetti paper, anything to... Okay. Oh, okay, so you don't have boxes yet. No, that's fine. I actually have an assortment um, of boxes, and if you want to show me your items that you have, um, I can try to pick ones that will kind of fit. Yeah, I remembered uh, you were saying that a lot of the items were kind of smaller, and so I did pre-pull some boxes. Okay. Yeah, mainly like necklaces and... Oh, okay. So these are gifts for different people. Okay, great. Um, that works perfectly then. I think that I can just grab as we go. Um, I don't think anything that you have is going to be a problem. It might not be um, a perfect fit on some of them in terms of um, the gift might be smaller than the box slightly, um, but I think nothing's going to be too big for the boxes that I have. Um, and we can make it look really nice with some tissue paper. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I have a sort of spring-themed spread that I picked out here. Um, and it's totally okay if you're not a fan of some of the choices. We can pick and choose, um, and we can also work with our different uh, boxes. So if you think that a certain paper, um, either wrapping paper or tissue paper, would look good with a certain box, we can um, set that up however you'd like. Yeah, uh, yeah, I do. I have some ribbons. We can make some bows. Does that sound good? I understand, yeah. I think sometimes presents can look a little plain without a bow or something, or at least a to and from tag, but um, if you're not planning on using those, I think the bows would be a really good idea. Okay. All right, well, let me just go ahead and get our spread set up. I'm going to grab some uh, ribbons from the back and lay out our options. Um, and we can get started. Okay. Was there anything else that you wanted uh, me to know before we go ahead? Okay. And did you need a glass of water or anything? Okay. Well, feel free to um, take off your jacket and get comfortable. You can pull up a chair if you'd like. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. So this is the spring selection that I've chosen for you. Um, just based on who you said you're giving the gifts to and just sort of the general um, season currently, or I guess we're sort of leading into spring, but I know you said you wanted something that was um, a beat and pretty without being too gaudy, and I think all together this might look a little overwhelming, um, but I think that we can pick and choose different um, pieces to match with each other and create some really uh, cute little boxes. So, um, on our ribbons here, we have quite a few. We've got a nice 
pale yellow, which I think would go really nicely with this um, sort of aero design paper. The light pink chevron would look really pretty with the sort of scalloped um, pink and green and gold wrapping paper. I think that both the solid and the chevron uh, green ribbons could go nicely with either paper because these tones are sort of mirrored in both of them. And the purple, I think, is a nice offset to any of the three. Um, it's just a very majestic color and um, let me actually show you here. This ribbon is actually somewhat of a textured ribbon. It's quite sheer um, when it's unrolled. When it's all rolled up, it looks like a pretty solid lavender um, color, but it's actually almost more of a mesh and shows up very nicely against something like this darker blue um, wrap, which is actually a cellophane based paper, making it quite sheer as well. And I have um, one box that has this nice pattern on it that's pretty cute and I think that it would look kind of cool to be able to see that um, underneath the wrapping paper so that it's not totally hiding it, um, and I think that that would look cool with a bow over top too. Obviously you're the client and I want you to be happy, so what do you think about these um, options? Yeah? Great. Okay, that's exciting. Um, in terms of tissue paper, we have this patterned one that's um, kind of naturey, has a naturey sort of feel because these almost look like little flowers. And then we have a deeper, more royal purple, which I think would look really pretty against the patterned papers. I also have some blue we have um, solid sheets in the middle and some metallic stripes on the outside here. And then I also brought this larger tissue paper that has this blue sort of um, flowery pattern along with the same pattern in pink, um, pink tissue paper and a sort of cyan tissue paper as well. And I know that you said that blue was sort of a connecting theme um, and even though I think 
green is a more traditionally uh, springtime color. I actually really enjoyed being able to create a spring palette with blue as the base. Um, so I'm excited about this and I hope that you are too. Um, are there any of these things that you do not like, don't want to um, have as a part of it, or do you just want to wait and see? Okay, yeah, that's great. Sounds good to me. Well, let's start then by... Clear off our workspace here a bit. And what we can do is we can go through first and I can select and style um, tissue paper for all of your boxes and then we can close them and move to wrapping um, and then selecting ribbon so that we do each stage of the process um, at once which I think will be a little more time efficient than doing one full box at a time um, but if you prefer, if you think you're going to get overwhelmed by selecting one item at a time for each box, um, we can always do it one box at a time. Did that make sense? I'm sorry. I just mean we can either go box by box or step by step of the process. Okay, yeah. I think that would be good because then we can see what sort of tissue paper is going to be in each um, box and get a better idea of our spread and what we want to match and mix. Okay, all right. So I've got this nice little blue box here darker I've got some green some pale yellow this is just a nice necklace box and I like having um, something that's a neutral like this because this is where you can get away with using a really bold print like what we have on our tissue paper. And similar for this more neutral uh, sliding box style. A little more masculine maybe. And then we have a very feminine green with some flowers. Now I can just move this since we won't need it. Set this aside. And finally, we have this patterned box that I was showing you as well. Which is a nice blue on the inside. What do you think about these box selections? Good. Okay. That sounds great to me. So I will um, begin by selecting some tissue paper options. And I think our easiest options are going to be with our neutrals first. I 
um, simply because they're where we can go the boldest uh, with our tissue paper. So I don't know about you, but I think that this more muted paper with the uh, sort of natural looking berry, berry flowers on it um, would be an excellent choice for the brown neutral because I think it's a little more understated than our other bold pattern and as you can see the white in the uh, your right pattern here is a lot lighter in the background it's a very striking white whereas in this one it's more of a cream tinted which I think would look almost old with the white um, or like there's a smoker's tint to it or something um, but with the brown I think it just looks more natural and neutral and kind of warm and it brings a little bit of life to this pretty plain box um, and since this one is for a necklace I actually think This bold pink pattern would be ideal um, for that box. What do you think? Okay, great. Sounds good. So we'll just set these other tissues aside. We'll also grab So I'm actually going to cut this piece of tissue paper into some more manageable pieces.
Okay. And if you just want to pop your gift in there. Thank you. I can remember my first interaction with um, wrapping was when I was a little girl and during the Christmas holiday season um, at most of the major department stores that I would be dragged to um, with my mother, there was usually a gift wrapping area um, where you could pay to have your gifts professionally wrapped um, like this, but it was only seasonal. And they were in like Filene's and JC Penney and uh, Macy's. I spent most of my time there uh, whenever I had to go to those places to shop with my mom, especially around the holidays. It's probably where my love for this began. And I also loved just sitting and watching them work. Partially because the gift wrap station was very near to the um, hair salon. So it always smelled really good, <laughs> like products. And it was kind of, um, I guess, calming to hear the sounds of the hair dryers in the distance, and I just enjoyed it. Um, so one good tip, this is this is usually less necessary for these smaller gifts, but when you're wrapping a larger gift, it's always a good idea to reverse the pattern at the bottom so that your recipient knows that there's nothing else. So rather than putting the design side forward, we put the reverse side up and I'll have you add the necklace Do you have any hobbies like this? <laughs> no. I know sometimes people think I'm crazy for doing something that's kind of known to be a little frustrating as a living, but I really do love it and I get to express my creativity and, you know, make these kinds of palettes and suggestions for my clients, which is really rewarding. Okay, so, um, what are you thinking we should do next? We have these two boxes that sort of go together as well. Do you want to do that? Okay. I think it's kind of a good idea to divide and conquer when you're not really sure. Um, 
instead of trying to take on all the boxes at once. So we got our neutrals done and now we will move toward our pale greens. Um, so we have a few different options. We have something like this purple would actually look really nice. You see that contrast? Yeah, it would be really um, sort of royal looking, fancy, and definitely rich. Mm -hmm. It has a really luxurious feel, this paper. Yeah, um, but we, we can definitely, I don't want you to feel pigeonholed into that. We could also see how these would look. Very bright. And metallics. They're a little busy. Yeah, I think just because they're so close in color. We also have more of our holly, which actually goes pretty nicely. It's pretty complimentary. Want to think about this one? Okay. These two actually, you know, two obviously go nicely together because the purple on the berries is the same. Yeah, and we can mix and match too if you want to do some of both of these. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Well, I'm glad I said something then. Let's make that happen. Still have... sheets. Here. And we can cut some purple to go along. square of these in case we need some backup. Okay, so now we're just going to sort of layer these. Maybe we'll do the opposite in the other one. So in the first one, we had the patterned paper on top of the dark purple paper. But on this one, we're going to do the opposite. I'm going to go ahead and put that gift in there. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Coming along pretty nicely. What do you think? Good. Okay. So we've got three more uh, boxes here. Did you need all three? Okay. I thought so. Okay. Just making sure. So, we have yet to use the blue or striped metallic, and we still have the bold blue pattern um, and the pink. So what are you thinking? Okay. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay. So we'll do... We'll do pink for the large box. We will do the metallic for the small box. Okay. And what about the dark blue one? Gonna leave that one? Okay. Good deal. Let's do this. in there. Okay. Okay. Place your gift in. Excellent. All right, I think you did a great job picking those out. I feel like they all look really good. So now we can get to selecting some um, wrapping paper. What do you think? Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six different um, boxes, three different kinds of wrapping paper. So we could um, feasibly do two presents for each, um, or if you just liked the blue on the patterned one, since these boxes are less decorative, uh, we can do that. You want to do it on this one too? Sure. I think that would look really cool. The blue on blue. And what about our other guys here? Mm. 
Mm -hmm. So we have the arrows and we also have the scalloped. Okay, so you want to use the arrows on the more neutral and or okay, so the scallops on the neutral boxes, okay. And the arrows on these two. Perfect. I love that. I think that works amazing. So let's get started. Essentially, what we're going to do is just flip our gift. Good, so the pattern is nice and taut over the gift. And we're just going to trim away some of the unwanted edges. And seal her up. Gift one.
is really nice of you, by the way, to do all this for your friends. You're very lucky. Do you have any big plans today? Mmm. That sounds nice. Yeah, sometimes it's important to just get out there and make it happen. <laughs> well, good. It's good for you. So what do you do for fun then? That's good. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Have you always been good at that? Mm. I see. As long as you're happy, you know. No, I'm not. Yeah. I moved down here um, from Connecticut a number of years ago. It's taken me a really long time, but I think I finally feel like I have a home here. Maybe not in the sense that I am now, where I'm going to be forever, but I spent a long time feeling like I didn't belong here. And I think After all this time, I finally feel like I do belong here, and that's a good feeling. I could never imagine what it's like to be um, a military child. And to move, you know, so often and through so many major moments. Yeah, especially because when you're a teenager, you know, everything matters and everything seems really important, so it can be really difficult to, you know, be mature enough to deal with something like being uprooted. Not to mention, it's just nice to have sustainable friendships and as much as I hate to admit it. It's just not, not very sustainable um, to have a friendship with someone after you move far away from where they are. Not that the person doesn't still love you or care about you, but just it's really difficult to maintain that kind of stressful connection where you're never able to really do the things you want to do with the person and 
you know, life is very distracting often. I find that we all get caught in our little realities, whatever that might be, whether it's your, you know, partner or your children or your parents or your job. I feel like everyone humans are just programmed to I feel like deal most with what's right in front of them. So and I'll never forget um, it was the night before I was moving, I think, and I was hanging out with my friends at the time, people who were very, very near and dear to me, and I remember one of them saying that he had had a friend earlier in his life who moved away, and I can still remember his friend's name, even though I had never met him. He said, They had been best friends, and they vowed to talk and still be best friends after he moved, and never hears from him anymore. And I remember thinking at that moment, and even saying to him, that that would never be me. And that our friendships would persist. And you know, I never really got to find out whether that would be true or not because I was having such a hard time, you know, fitting in and settling down where I moved to. But their lives were all continuing, you know, just as they were. So they got bored with me much quicker than I did with them. Still makes me sad sometimes to think about, but we were all very young. And I definitely didn't know yet at that point in my life how things were, and just how people are, how fleeting things are, you know, not to sound so, oops, not to sound so grim, yeah, I probably should have thought about that before I was talking, but I think you probably know at least what I mean enough. Yeah. But, you know, the good part is, is that we are resilient as people and we move on as well and Eventually we find 
the things that make us happy and hard to move past some of the, you know, traumas that we all have as children. Because there are always those moments in everyone's life, no matter how different, that make them realize something new about the world. Everyone has moments of being let down, and I think that um, it's how you deal with that that really ends up determining your character. So, it can be a really positive thing in the end, right? Have you ever read um, Araby by James Joyce? Yeah, it's the, um, it's kind of an Irish, I guess, based folk. I don't know if I'd call it a folk tale, but it's sort of a coming of age story. And the main character deals with a lot of disappointment. about not just love, but the world and just the unforgiving kind of cruelty that it can have. That sort of moment where we realize it's not all about us. <laughs> me a bit, but I knew how it made me feel after I read it, you know? I think a lot of things in this life you kind of, oh, you kind of learn as you go along. And sometimes, no matter how many times someone explains something to you or tries to get you to see what they mean, sometimes you just have to live it yourself. Some lessons you just can't learn in a textbook style, you know, you can't just have someone tell you how much something's gonna hurt or what it's gonna feel like or, you know, what's good for you, what's bad for you. I think that that's highly individualized. Everyone's good, bad, evil, right, wrong is going to at least slightly differ. What do you think? 
be good. I'm so glad. Okay, well, we just have one more step, which is our ribbons. What do you think? Yep, let me bring them back out. Buried under all this tissue scrap. That is one thing about my job is that it's very messy. And I'm not a very messy person, so. Okay, so again, we have this light lavender mesh that would be pretty, I think, with any of the options. We have this solid green or sort of aquamarine um, shimmery, which I think would look nice better with either of these two patterns than the blue, but that's not to say it's not an option. Okay, we have this kind of peachy pink. with a gold chevron pattern, which again, I think would look good with either of the patterned um, wraps. And we have the same sort of ribbon, same style, but in a more of this aqua color. And then lastly, we have This nice yellow, which I think is really cute because it's scalloped around the edges. And that would also kind of tie all these together in a sense. Um, I think that the yellow might look better on this paper just because it does have a true yellow in the paper as well. Whereas this is more of a gold tone in the scalloped paper. Um, so I think that would look cute. What do you think? Okay, so we'll do one of those in that. Um, what are you thinking for the blue ones? Because that might be the hardest. Yeah, so this would be the peach, gold, and blue. Versus... Yeah, I think that's a little too bland. Okay. And purple. Okay, so maybe do the bigger one with the purple. Okay, we can do that. And then what do you want to do for the smaller one? You just want to leave this one? Yeah. Yeah, we can we can get you like a mini bow or something too if you wanted. Do you want to wrap these two together then? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. We can kind of stack them. I can put a little piece of tape. Since the cellophane is so sticky, we can just do a tape bubble on the bottom and sort of adhere them and then we can wrap them up together. Is that good? Perfect. I love that. I'm glad you suggested it. Okay. Three more gifts, three more ribbons. What do you think between this or this? I like the first one better too. I think that this very matching shade with, between the design and the bold looks really really good and then we have the 
Okay, like this and this. Okay. Perfect. This is exciting. I really love your whole uh, palette. Well, you're welcome. Okay. So we are going to do... We have a couple options here. Let me just cut a length. So what we could do is we could do a single knot and then we could like make a bunch of frills essentially with the bow. This isn't obviously what it would look like but you know it would have like a mass on top. Or we can do the kind of Tiffany style where we Cross them and then we can make a bow on top. Do you like that? Great, okay. We'll cut these on a bit of an angle here. Like this? You want these a little shorter? Okay. How's that? Two stack. And since we can't really flip this one, we can do
Okay. Something like this for this one. A little bit of a mixed bow. Okay. Good deal. And then you want to do a similar, more severe. Okay. How's that? Okay, great. Here we go. Okay, you just want to go once with this one. Do you want to do it long ways? Or short ways? Short? Okay. Straight around. Okay. Yeah, sometimes these thicker ribbons don't sit as well for a bow, so that's fine. I probably should have told you that ahead of time, I'm sorry. But that's why we're here, so you can tell me what you do and don't like. We can get you settled with what you do like. How's that? Excellent. Okay. Last but not least, how would you want to do this last one then? Okay. I can do that. Okay, well we have got you all squared away then if you're 
happy with them. Yeah? Okay. Well, let me then grab out my keyboard so we can get you all rung up and help you get on out of here so you can go enjoy the rest of your day. Okay? Great. Okay. So we've got your name and boxes, date. Um, we had our services, which included selecting boxes and interpreting theme. Then we did tissue paper selection. Okay. And finally ribbon. Okay, are you satisfied with all of your gifts? Great, thank you so much. Just make a note. Okay, does everything look correct on the screen for you? Good, okay. And will you be paying with a uh, cash or card today? Okay. If you can insert that there. Great. And what are the last three digits on the back of the card? fine. And if I can just get your signature there. Okay. All right, great. Well, is there anything else I can do for you today? No? Okay. Well, thank you for all of your patience and all of your creative input. Um, I really enjoyed working with you. Sorry that I didn't talk too much. It's easy to get wrapped up, um, no pun intended, I guess, in what I'm doing with the gifts. And it's one of the few things that I'm not great at multitasking while I'm doing it. Um, but I just want you to have the best product in the end that I can give you. So I'm really happy that you're happy um, with all of the turnout. And did you need a bag or anything to put these in? You've got one. Okay. All right. Well, if there's nothing else I can help you with, I hope that you have a great day. And um, if you ever need this again, just swing on by or give me a call. Let me know. I can pick out some options for you. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much. Have a great day.